Now the next step is going to be taking this red background layer and converting that into a 3D object as well so that I can combine it with this PSD Toots logo and make my final composite. So let's go ahead and hide the PSD Toots 3D layer for now just to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to select my red background layer and this time I'm actually going to select the pixels here and create a work path. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my path panel and down here at the bottom click this uh, selection to path. Now that I have a work path selected I can choose my work path as the source and click create to create my represent object. So you can see here now that I have my simple 3D uh, shape here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, and actually the only thing I'm going to do is drop down the extrusion depth here. Okay, I just want it a little bit thicker than the text layer. So let's go ahead and 0.7. Actually, I'm going to drop that down to 0.5. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and say okay. All right, so now I have here a 3D object, another 3D layer in my composite. Now what I want to do is add the color or this material onto the extrusion or the sides of this 3D box. The easiest way to do this is to use my material drop tool, right? So I come over here to my 3D scene panel and at the very bottom of the list of tools here is my material drop tool. Okay, we have the material drop tool as well as the select material tool. With that material drop tool here, if I hover over any part of my 3D object and option click, you're going to notice that I load that material. So look up here in the options bar. I have my loaded material, the red background uh, material. So now I have that loaded into my paint bucket. I can just simply click onto any part of my 3D object and load that material onto any face. All right. The next step with this object is to actually punch out the hole in the center. So let's go ahead and align this more or less um, parallel with the screen. And use my marquee tool and simply draw a box around here and either with that selection um, or with a work path like using work paths better because it um, gives me sharper lines I can come over here to my 3D menu and choose repose create constraint from selected path now remember constraints are simply sub paths within a bounding uh, geometry okay so down here at the bottom, my internal constraints controls, I'm going to choose this inside constraint and actually make it a hole. Okay, I'm happy with that. Say okay. Now you can see here I have the outside box here um, to use in my composite. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off my panel. Now there's just one thing I want to do here um, to clean up this object a little bit before I combine it with the other 3D object. Notice here you see a gray outline around the edge of the box. Now I think what's happening here is it's using some of the transparent pixels on the edge of that texture and um, showing you a basically no texture at the, at the edge. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my materials tab and choose my red front inflation and down here at the bottom I'm going to open up this texture okay open up this texture and you're going to see I have that red box that I started with now what I'm going to do is trim the transparent pixels say OK uh, go ahead and save and close and you're going to see that it updates and fixes the edge of the box okay that looks much better okay now I'm going to go ahead and turn back on this PSD Toots 3D layer and you can see here that we have two separate 3D objects, right? Each um, has its own lighting setting, camera positions, etc. I want to actually merge these two 3D objects together so that they can share the same lighting, shadows, they can catch and cast shadows off each other. So what I'm going to do is select both of these 3D objects and choose 3D Merge 3D Layers from the 3D menu. Okay. Now these two objects are together. You'll notice that in my layers panel, I only have one 3D object. And you'll also notice that in the 3D scene panel now, I have two meshes where before we only had one. So if I filter by my meshes here, the second tab, you can see I have the red background square as well as the original PSD toots. I can go ahead and hide that mesh, I can show it, and you can see that they are indeed two separate 3D objects in a single 3D scene. Now what I want to do is actually align these two 3D objects together. 
So the easiest way to do that is in my mesh panel, I'm going to choose the PSD Toots mesh, okay, and choose the third um, rotation buttons here, okay. The third rotation buttons here are the mesh rotation buttons. You have the object rotation that moves the whole object in the 3D scene. You have the camera rotation that actually moves the whole scene. Now if I turn on my overlays, let's go ahead and show my ground plane, you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see here that the whole scene is object, right, when I use my, uh, sorry, the whole scene is rotated when I use my camera uh, rotation tools. If I choose my object rotation tools, both objects are moving. Now what if I just wanted to rotate an individual mesh? Now let's go ahead and choose the mesh rotation tool and you can see here that now I'm actually individually rotating the meshes, okay? takes a little bit of practice here, but essentially what you want to do is align the objects so that they're perfectly aligned both vertically and horizontally. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of this. Okay, I noticed that it's a little bit tilted. Let's just go ahead and choose the mesh rotation tool again here. And I just want to roll it just a little bit so that it's more aligned and slide it back a little bit there. Okay. Let's bring this back into position. Okay, now what I want to do is snap this 3D object to the ground plane because see how it's kind of cutting through here? So the easiest way is to go to your 3D panel and choose snap object to ground plane. Okay, so it takes the lowest point and snaps it to the ground plane. Now I can actually better, um, oops, let's go ahead and choose the object rotation tool. I can better uh, manipulate this so that it's aligned with the panel. Let's do that again. There we go. Now this looks pretty good. I want to rotate this back to front position here and do some final touch-ups here on the PSD Toots mesh. Let's go ahead and slide this a little bit to the right and I'm going to pull this forward actually, pull this down. Okay. Takes a little time getting used to these tools um, but once you get the hang of it it's nice because you actually have very fine control over all the different objects. Okay, let's go ahead and start playing around with lights now to get the proper reflections and then we can do the final render. Let's go ahead and choose the camera rotation tool and up here in the options bar, go ahead and choose this preset straight on camera. Let's take a look at that. And then with your object rotation tool, let's go ahead and roll this just a little bit so that it's snapping to the ground plane. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is notice that I've been using this 3D axis to uh, rotate the different components of my 3D scene. I've used it to rotate the mesh as well as the cameras and I'm going to show you how you can actually use it to rotate the lights as well. So this axis is context sensitive. So depending on which tool I have selected either in the toolbar or in the toolbars listed here on the side of the 3D panel, it'll be it'll rotate whatever tool I have selected. So in this case, with the object tool, I'm rotating the object. With the camera tool, I'm rotating the camera. And it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see there's a small icon here that shows me what property it is that I'm rotating, okay? And if I have a mesh selected, you can see there's a, I'm rotating the individual meshes, etc. So let's start talking about lights here. First thing I'm going to do is turn off my ground plane now that I have it aligned and go ahead and turn on my 3D lights. Okay? You're going to see here by default we actually have three infinite lights. Okay? These are the 3D light widgets. Again with the light tool selected, let's go ahead and look at all my lights in this um, scene. I can actually select on these different widgets to rotate my lights. Now again, I want to point out that to see the final lighting effects, you have to use the ray tracer. So let's go ahead and turn on the draft ray tracer for now and talk about a couple of points on quality. So choose the first button, the scene button, and down here at the bottom, again make sure you have that first scene line item selected, and down here at the bottom you'll see a quality menu. Okay. Now by default we choose interactive or the GL mode which gives you the fastest performance. 
Let's go ahead and choose ray trace draft for now, okay? And now we're going to actually start drawing for the rendering for the final lighting, okay? What you see here are um, tiles being drawn showing you which areas that we're rendering for, okay? This is called progressive rendering. Now at any time you can actually come in here and pause the render and it'll hold that rendering state. So you don't have to wait for the whole render to complete if you're happy with what you have, okay? Now if you've paused your rendering and you want to resume it, you can always come to the 3D menu and choose Resume Progressive Render and it'll take off from where you left off, okay? Similarly, you can also take your lasso tool or any selection tool and if you just want to render a certain selection to check out the shadows, you can make that selection and choose 3D Progressive Render Selection. So it's only going to render for that area, okay? A couple of quick tips. Now it takes a while to get used to how to reposition your lights. Go back to interactive um, and choose my light, um, light tools. And go ahead and play around with the different lights until you're happy with um, the setting. Okay, and here I have um, my lights positioned to the orientation that I'm happy with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the final ray trace uh, rendering. Select my scene panel and go ahead and take a look at it. So first thing I notice is I want to actually reposition my object a little bit so that it can show off some of the reflections better um, based on my position of my lighting. And so you can see here that as I rotate this um, and I start to render for it, I get more of that reflection off the red onto the PSD Toots uh, text. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is actually scale up a little bit. Now working with 3D layers in Photoshop is similar to working with web objects or vector shapes where you can actually start with something smaller because you can always scale up um, at any point. So in this example, I'm actually starting with a 150 or even 72 DPI image and then I can always scale up the object to the size that I need and re-render for it. That's one of the benefits you get from working with 3D objects or 3D layers in addition to the ability to you know, change your lighting at any point or change the color, change the materials, etc. Okay, let's go ahead and pause this render now and if I let it render for about seven minutes, um, I can show you what we come up with uh, at the end here. Now the time it takes to actually complete a final render really depends on the type of machine you have um, and the hardware setup. I'm working on a MacBook Pro, the newer unibody models, and it takes you know between five and seven minutes before I'm, I'm pretty happy with the result. And that pretty much concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you for listening. And um, if you have any comments or suggestions for uh, more tutorials regarding 3D features in Photoshop CS5 Extended, please let us know. Thank you.